independent variables. What we just now talked, I mean, in regression, we talked about independent. We can think of them as independent variables. But they are not independent variables. They are constructs. I've just written that for your understanding. OK? Whereas your customer satisfaction is your endogenous variable. It will have errors towards it, not out of it. OK? So regression is towards it. It is not causing anything. It is being caused upon. Right? That's what we are trying to do. So far, yes, simple. It's pretty much on the lines that we just know. Whatever we've talked about, it's pretty much on the same lines. It's just that I'm just building one more step to it. We started with correlation. We've taken another step to regression. From regression, we've taken another step to structural equation modeling. OK? Let's look at some other uh, concepts. So this whole diagram of perceived quality along with its indicators is called a measurement model. It displays the relationship between constructs and indicator variables or indicator values. Okay, that's called a measurement model. How many measurement models do we have here? Come again. Three. We have three measurement models. These are the three measurement models. Yeah, they're trying to bring out the relationship between the indicators and the latent variable. Okay. In addition to that, we have relationship between constructs itself. That is called a structural model. In measurement model, relationship between construct and indicator. In structural model, relationship between constructs. Gone, huh? <laughs> have we gone to another plane? Measurement model. If I just look at only this, this is measurement model, right? So I have three measurement models here. If I bring all of them together, right, I have a structural model also. See, finally, this is what I'm trying to understand. These are only trying to explain to me this value. But finally, I need this. This is my core, correct? And that is why this is called the inner model. And these are the outer models. OK. So any particular situation, if I try to break it down into what affects it, it will look like this. If I try to understand what is uh, you know, learning uh, outcomes of children, right? Learning outcomes of children will be dependent on, let's say, teacher, uh, um, teacher qualification and uh, parents' education. Teacher qualification will be based on, again, to which, in which city, which college, uh, which course they did. Right? That is how you break down each complex situation. You try to understand what are the causal relationships. This is causal research. Right? Cause and effect if relationships, if you try to study, that is causal research. Yeah? Till here with me? Yes? Now let's talk about mediating and moderating. We've understood the main part. We've understood what structural equation modeling is. Structural equation modeling is nothing but bringing multiple regressions together to find out latent variables. Yeah, in fact, this is what is being done now. All research is being done on this. That's why we're talking about it. Yeah, we're only trying to find out how to increase sales, how to increase uh, sales satisfaction, how to increase uh, you know, uh, brand value, these are all latent variables. Since latent variables are difficult to understand and difficult to measure, that's why you have structural equation modeling. Otherwise, you would have done it with regression only. Yeah? Now, let's try to understand mediation and moderation. Mediation, when a third variable or construct intervenes between the two related constructs. Its role is to explain why the relationship exists. Let's look at this particular question. You'll understand it. I've taken two variables. Curiosity leads to learning. OK? In this, 
there is a mediating variable called discovery. If I'm discovering something new, I'm more likely to learn. If I'm discovering nothing new, I'm less likely to learn. So there, discovery is a mediating variable. Correct? Yes, so far? Yes. Now moderation. When the, third when the third variable changes the relationship, Okay, it gives context to the effect. Same example of curiosity leads to re learning. Here, distraction. Right? If you see the difference between both the diagrams, the only re difference is that there is no correlation between the third variable and the independent and dependent variables. Yeah? yeah? It's like I'm talking into empty space. <laughs> okay. So mediator must be a causal result of independent variable and a causal antecedent of the dependent variable. What does this mean? All big, big words are there. Mediator must be the causal result of the independent variable. What is the independent variable here? Curiosity. It should be the causal result. Is it causing? Yes. And the causal antecedent. Antecedent means before. before. Causal antecedent of the dependent variable. What is my dependent variable? Learning. Is it a causal antecedent? Yes. That's all it means. <laughs> okay? So the mediator should be correlated. If there is no relation, that is moderation. Yeah? Moderator must not be the casual uh, causal result. That's the only difference. Okay? This is the basic understanding of me mediation and moderation. Because there could be certain variables which are not connected to the uh, independent variable, but still have an effect on your dependent variable. That is why we use moderation and mediating factors, which is not there in regression. In regression, there has to be a correlation. Correct? But here, even though there is no correlation, we are still considering. Yeah? Uh, to just give you an example, let's say you got up on the wrong side of the bed one day, because of which it has affected your, uh, let's say, test score. If you actually run a correlation, there is no correlation there. There is no correlation, but it is affecting. To what extent it affects, we can't do through regression. But we can do through structural equation modeling. Though there is no correlation, we are still finding out. Okay, so that is the advantage of structural equation modeling. We can consider things which do not have correlation, but yet have influence on the final result. Chance uh, events. But you can't uh, study chance events in regression. Those are called outliers. Outliers have to be removed. Right? How do we remove outliers? Residual plots. If you remember when, we, when, when I ran the diagnostics, residual plots, through residual plots, if the value is greater than 3, plus or minus 3, that means you have outliers. Outliers have to be removed. But here outliers are also being considered. Six stages of... Uh, I mean, this is how you conduct your research. Defining individual constructs. If you remember, our individual constructs was perceived quality and customer uh, expectation. First, we need to define them. That is my first stage. Then I need to develop a measurement model. Individual, we, there were three measurement models in the diagram that we just now saw. So first, you have to develop that model. So develop your measurement model. Your, develop, your measurement model will be developed based on the theory that you have. The literature review that you do. Yeah? Now study the produced em uh, empirical results and assess the measurement model validity. You, so you have first made your measurement model. Now you test for validity of that measurement model using different tests. Discriminant analysis, conjoint analysis, uh, convergent analysis, um, um, what is that? multi uh, collinearity test. These are all different ways in which you try to test the validity. 
I'm not going to get into all of these tests. But what I'm trying to say is that using these tests, you validate the model that you already have. Right? So till here, you develop the measurement model. After that, you develop your structural model. What is your structural model? Between, Between the constructs. Yeah, so SEM is nothing but measurement model plus structural model, that's all. SEM is measurement model plus structural model. Measurement model, relationship between construct and indicators, structural model between constructs themselves. If you do this, you are done with SEM. That's all there is in SEM. If you go individually into each of those steps, yeah, it will get technical. It will get technical in the, in, the, in the form of what are the validity tests that are there, what are the reliability tests that are there, which I don't want to get into that. There's no use of that. What I'm trying to convey is that the concept of SIM. Have I been able to get through to you all of what SIM is? Yeah? Now let's look at the TAM model. Okay? Technology acceptance model. Most widely used model developed by 1989, uh, developed in 1989 by Davis and uh, Bagosi. The model tries to explain why people would choose to use a particular technology. Uh, can anybody tell me 